I saw women flinching away from men who continued unwanted touching. Um, I received texts and Facebook messages that implied or outright suggested sex. As someone who has new to New Jersey, I, I really do want to be clear that this sort of toxic atmosphere, it exists a lot of places, but it's real special in New Jersey. Women came forward with a torrent of stories, ranging from inappropriate workplace culture and lewdness to bullying and sexual assault. In this first public forum, the witnesses laid bare a culture where they say victims are expected to stay silent for the sake of campaigns and career. A lot of being a woman in politics seemed to me to involve walking a line between being fun and flirty, someone the men who still seem to be the majority of those in charge wanted around and didn't see as a buzzkill, um, and being serious and staid enough that those same men didn't make assumptions about where the night was leading. A bombshell moment came during the night when a longtime labor official singled out one of the state's most powerful politicians, accusing Senate President Steve Sweeney of using intimidation and threats toward her in 2010 during pension and benefit reform negotiations. The Senate president stood up, pointed his finger at me, and he said, if you were a man, I would take you right outside now and kick your ass. When a man who, who is so much bigger than you towers over you and threatens you with violence, that is not okay. That's sexism and that is abuse of power. Public sector unions have been one of Sweeney's fiercest foils. Clashing on policy and spending millions in attempts to unseat the South Jersey Democrat. Reached by phone, Senator Sweeney issued this response. This is someone who has organized public rallies against me, has tried to drown me out, shut me out, and shut me down. She has been the ringleader in trying to silence different views. She has no credibility at all. The panel didn't ask questions or comment on shared stories, emphasizing that the platform's purpose isn't to adjudicate allegations, but simply to listen. I think we have to acknowledge that if current sexual harassment and discrimination trainings were sufficient, we would not still be mired in decade-old problems. So our work will begin with bringing in experts in the area of workplace culture and climate to thoroughly review and challenge the foundations of our current approach. What we couldn't show you on camera is the story of a young woman in her 20s who asked to remain anonymous, who recently ran her first statewide race. In tears, she described being groped, harassed, propositioned, and verbally abused by members of her party. Afterwards, she told me she believes she's been able to continue her work in politics because she hasn't spoken up. That's a theme we heard over and over again. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The people who share their experiences here today represent so many people that will never feel empowered or are still intimidated. Patricia Teffenhart says so far more than 360 people have filled out an anonymous online survey sharing their experience working in state politics. We will review and update policies, strengthen procedures, and create independent avenues for reporting. Two more public listening sessions are being scheduled for March in the southern and central parts of the state. The panel plans to take this testimony and turn it into a document to help political leaders change the culture. This is just the beginning. In Fort Lee, Brianna Venozzi, NJTV News.